Without fingerprints, he could provide one of his hidden weapons to terrorists or help them develop their own. Well, the war really had absolutely nothing to do with terrorism. Uh, there was no connection whatsoever between Iraq and the secular regime there and the religious fanatics who perpetrated 9-11. They wanted to believe that there was a connection, but the CIA was sitting there, the FBI was sitting there, I was sitting there saying, we've looked at this issue for years. For years we've looked for a connection, and there's just no connection. Saddam was not a maniac or a fool. He was a terrible villain, yes, but he was not going to sacrifice his own life and the future of his country to stupid adventures with terrorists who had completely antithetical views to his. It is just inconceivable to anybody who understands Saddam Hussein and understands the nature of highly centralized dictatorships generally that uh, dictators would want to give up control of their most potent weaponry. Because once you've given up control, you have no control. So you can't say to Al-Qaeda, you will use this or you won't use it. The decision on whether or not they're going to use it depends on what Osama bin Laden does. Do you want to entrust your fate to Osama bin Laden and his nihilistic ways? I don't think so. Saddam Hussein is a psychopath and a sociopath. He was not an irrational being in the sense that he was going to um, ensure his own demise by doing something like that. Al-Qaeda has had total contempt for Saddam Hussein himself. He's been a socialist, he's been very harsh, he's treated Islamic leaders, Islamist leaders extremely harshly. Iraq, and we have very good intelligence on this, was not part of the picture of terrorism before we invaded. Saddam Hussein and bin Laden were enemies. Bin Laden considered and said that Saddam Hussein was the socialist infidel. These were very different kinds of individuals competing for power in their own way. And Saddam Hussein made very sure that al-Qaeda couldn't function uh, in Iraq, that terrorists couldn't function, except for the small northeastern quadrant of the country where there was an extremist group, but he had no control over that. It was near the Iranian border. There's no doubt that Anzar al-Islam is a radical Islamic terrorist group with ties to al-Qaeda, but they operate in a part of Iraq that is not controlled by Hussein. The leaders say they seek to overthrow Hussein and his government. They are our enemy, or really they are also our enemy. We believe that Saddam Hussein, him and his group and his ministers also, they are outside of Islamist zone. And the ties with Al-Qaeda was just a scare tactic to exploit the trauma, the very real trauma that the American people have felt ever since 9-11, and to associate that trauma with Iraq, as you know from the polls, most Americans believed that Iraq had something to do with 9-11, and it was a very successful, very deliberate, and very unethical and immoral operation on the part of the PR people of this administration. We now know that Saddam has resumed his efforts to acquire nuclear weapons. Among other sources, we've gotten this from first-hand testimony from defectors. Access to emigres and defectors with more direct access to these programs. From three Iraqi defectors, we know that Iraq in the late 1990s had several mobile biological weapons labs. It was only after defectors told us about it. Their inspectors were in the country. The most important information that inspectors have ever gotten on what's going on in Iraq have come from defectors. We know about that capability from defectors and other sources. A recent defector stated that as recently as August of 1908, that's while inspections were still going on, a formal order was issued to proceed with a nuclear program at full blast. Our strategy is to bring to the world the danger that Saddam poses in his current state. Without doubt, he is developing weapons of mass destruction. Without doubt, he has chemical and biological weapons. And without doubt, for 30 years, he has been trying to acquire a nuclear weapon. The usual scrutiny of these kind of guys was just not done adequately. That there was this attitude of let's find the smoking gun, let's find the evidence, rather than let's, let's look at what's out there and weigh the evidence. They wanted to believe him. It goes back to contacts that originated as early as the 1990s. Uh, with individuals like Dick Cheney, like Paul Wolfowitz, like Richard Pearl, uh, dealing with Ahmed Chalabi. They became enamored of this fellow who dressed like a Westerner, talked with a British accent, 
uh, and appeared to be upper crust and therefore was quite believable. And everyone in Washington was believing them. And I thought people had really somehow checked out of reality in order to go to war, that it was a war fever that had taken over. These people wanted to get back into, a, into Baghdad. They couldn't defeat Saddam Hussein, but they knew that U.S. military power could. So the worst of these offenders, who would be Ahmad Shalabi, who has been in exile from his own country for 20 to 30 years and is clearly not a hero under any definition of heroism uh, to his own people, sold the Pentagon on the idea that Saddam Hussein did have weapons of mass destruction and he must be stopped. But they were bringing forward individuals who they claimed were either high-level military or scientists with access. They were looking for money, first of all, because Charlie was paying money. Supplying money shouldn't be a surprise. That's how informants are, are dealt with in the spy business. But there was no effort to check their bona fides. None. Every checkable piece of that intelligence that's come to public notice has proven to be false, or at least self-serving in the extreme. We had the U.S. Congress approve and appropriate money for the Iraqi National Congress of no telling how much they were taking off the top for themselves. You get all kinds of people who want a reward and have nothing to offer. And many ended up with Chalabi because they would believe anything bad about Iraq. It was phony evidence. It was based on intelligence we had from Iraqi exiles who wanted this country to attack Iraq so these people could then take over in Baghdad and establish their own regime. And we have to go back and examine just the role that defectors played uh, throughout the entire inspection process. If inspections work, then you don't overthrow Saddam Hussein. How does somebody like that, I don't know even how to describe him, get into a position where he's determining U.S. policy. Senior members of the Department of Defense gave him their thumbs up. Yeah, the, his information was coming into the White House to people like Dick Cheney through the uh, Office of Special Plan. So it was coming in through an, through an avenue that's not traditional to the intelligence community and wasn't open to being vetted or reviewed. You had Chalabi himself admit that they didn't mind providing false information because it helped them to achieve their goal of removing Saddam. Nobody in Iraq will defend that regime, including the military, both the regular army and the Republican Guard. Our liberation would not have been achieved without the, the determination of President George W. Bush and the co commitment of the coalition, at the forefront of which stand the people of the United States of America and Great Britain. The Iraqis will never forget your courage and sacrifice on our behalf. We are here today to declare that a new Iraq is born, an Iraq where dignity, justice, and human rights are assured for all citizens. There is no risk of a breakup of Iraq, that there is no risk of uh, a civil war. I stand before this assembly as a representative of free Iraq. To all those here who helped us in our struggle for liberation, we extend our gratitude. The Iraqi opposition will uh, ensure that the continuation of its institutions and to uh, re-establish democracy and the rule of law. He said, I got what I wanted, I got my war, I'm back in Iraq, and if you people relied on my information, you're stupid. Every year, by law and by custom, we meet here to consider the State of the Union. This year, we gather in this chamber deeply aware of decisive days that lie ahead. Bush presented so many distorted beliefs, estimates, and guesstimates that he appears that he was misleading the public and the Congress. That Saddam Hussein had the materials to produce as much as 500 tons of sarin, mustard, and VX nerve agent. Any sarin that they were making in 1990, 1991, had a known shelf life of about two months. I have confirmed this with inspectors and analysts who were deeply involved in the 1990s analyses. Well, if you made it 12 years ago and it had a shelf life of two months, it may not be safe to drink, but it isn't sarin nerve gas any longer. And there's no way the agency could not have known that.
U.S. intelligence indicates that Saddam Hussein had upwards of 30,000 munitions capable of delivering chemical agents. Inspectors recently turned up 16 of them. Despite Iraq's recent declaration denying their existence. And then they tried to use uh, the fact that inspectors found 16 of these as evidence that, that, that thousands more existed. And again, I mean, it's, as a methodology, it's a very weak way to predict anything. And, and I think it, it borders on propaganda to argue that, that the small number that have been found by inspectors implied that, in this case, over 29,000 exist. Saddam Hussein has not accounted for the remaining 29,984 of these prohibited munitions. But this way, Bush administration officials either routinely said or tried to give the impression that if Iraq had not fully accounted for all of a certain item related to uh, chemical or biological weapons, then it must be there. And, and that's not at all what the inspector said or found. He hadn't accounted for that material. He's given no evidence that he has destroyed it. And the inspectors could go in and say, okay, we can prove, yeah, you destroyed that set in this way or that set in that way, but these others, we can't prove it. And, and, and that doesn't mean that they didn't destroy these warheads or whatever the item was. It just means Iraq hadn't been able to prove it. If Saddam Hussein had admitted to the uh, Iranians, to the Syrians and his own people, that he had been so intimidated by the UN inspection and sanctions process that he'd given up all that, they probably would have torn him limb from limb. Saddam Hussein had material sufficient to produce more than 38,000 liters of botulinum toxin, enough to subject millions of people to death by respiratory failure. He hadn't accounted for that material. Revealed its biological weapons program, particularly its ability to make botulinum toxin, and therefore it was an open issue. But again, it doesn't mean that, that, that what the inspectors found was evidence that Iraq possessed that. Our intelligence sources tell us that he has attempted to purchase high-strength aluminum tubes suitable for nuclear weapons production. I think there was very little doubt that the centrifuge tubes, so-called, were nothing but rocket motor tubes to go into uh, M81 style artillery rockets. They certainly uh, have all the, the specs for that. Nuclear experts, for instance, from uh, Lawrence Livermore's laboratory's Z division, the experts on centrifuge enrichment, came out and said, no, you couldn't enrich uh, your, uh, uranium using these, uh, these tubes. They're not compatible. Well, I saw it as a deliberate attempt to take information uh, and selectively take information and try to basically say Iraq poses an imminent nuclear threat and therefore action is absolutely necessary. And I felt that was absolutely wrong. The International Atomic Energy Agency confirmed in the 1990s that Saddam Hussein had an advanced nuclear weapons development program. The administration showed photos of nuclear or former nuclear weapon sites in Iraq pre-1991 nuclear weapon sites, claimed that new construction showed they were ongoing nuclear weapons production sites, complete nonsense. The most troubling thing about the fact of the distortions and the misleading statements that Bush gave Congress is that it is a federal felony, it's a crime, to mislead and distort information and present it to the Congress. The British government has learned that Saddam Hussein recently sought significant quantities of uranium from Africa. When Secretary Powell addressed the UN about weapons of mass destruction, he deliberately left out any reference to attempts to buy uranium from Africa. I didn't use the uranium at that point because I didn't think that was sufficiently uh, strong as evidence to present before the world. CIA officials warned members of the president's staff the intelligence was not good enough to make the statement Iraq tried to buy uranium from Africa. In October for the Cincinnati speech, not for the State of the Union, but the Cincinnati speech, George Tennant uh, asked that this be taken out of the Cincinnati speech, the reference to, uh, to Yellowcake. It was taken out of the Cincinnati speech because whenever the Director of Central Intelligence wants something out, it's gone. How to get back in? Uh, it's not a matter of getting back in. It's a matter, Tim, that three plus months later, uh, people didn't remember that George Tennant...